Hello, welcome to the Tennessee STEM Innovation Summit for 2023, Sparking Curiosity. My name is Jerry Lynn Recker, and I'm here today with my little miniature robot, Ozobot. And we are going to guide you through learning how to effortlessly teach coding with zero content knowledge while integrating STEM using Ozobots in the classroom, and also for professional development. For our outcome today, in this session, participants are going to be able to explore innovative strategies with robotics, that are user-friendly and do not require any prior knowledge of coding or programming for that matter. You will be guided through the platform for Ozobot and um, you'll be introduced to some strategies that you can utilize in the classroom and also for professional development for teacher buy-in. So again, my name is Jerry Lynn Recker. I'm the computer science instructional coach. I also teach STEM and science to sixth graders in Memphis, Tennessee. And so I'm gonna start today with the why. Um, why is this important? Why do we need to know uh, how to use Ozobots? Um, and I want to just let you know that it does help disseminate that fear of teaching computer science. Many educators are eager to teach that subject, but they just don't know where to begin or they don't feel confident in that area. Uh, secondly, um, we're going to explore the navigation of the pacing guide, as well as lesson plans for interdisciplinary STEM embedded instruction. Next, we're gonna create buy-in for students and teachers and parents and um, this can also be used to recruit future students to your school. Uh, lastly, I'm going to show you how Ozobots were used for professional development at my school and how it, it was utilized within our staff. Um, the, the professional development that day was phenomenal and you'll get a chance to see what that looks like at the end of this presentation. So why use Ozobot? What's the big deal? Well, they're the really cool coding uh, pocket robots that everyone seems to love. They're miniature robo robots that provide a hands-on approach to teaching across multiple content areas. The tiny robot has huge potential in teaching everyone from the beginner to the more advanced user. These little robots are versatile, durable, and very user-friendly to those who have little to no background knowledge in coding. And what's really interesting is every block-based code created in Ozoblockly, which is the block-based app, can be previewed in JavaScript. Okay, so why use Ozobots? Well, we're trying to overcome computer science barriers in that so many educators do want to um, teach computer science, but there are a few reasons that are, are, are becoming obstacles for those educators. And what I've learned is that a lot of educators want to teach this, but at their schools, they're often the only support structures or computer science educators. Uh, and they also lack colleagues with whom they could easily collaborate. Computer science teachers in low income areas, especially um, in racially diverse schools, unfortunately have fewer physical resources, uh, less professional support, and a lack of peer support to do their jobs effectively. Most computer science teachers feel as if they're working in isolation 
according to a stu study that was done by the Kapoor Center, CSTA, and the Alliance for Identity Inclusive Computing Education. So um, just to give you a little insight, I wanted to share the data with you from Tennessee uh, educators' beliefs on computer science resources and support. Um, and so if you'll notice, this is our state, Tennessee, and how teachers feel about resources and support. 50%, um, as you can see, of the teachers that were surveyed um, felt like they had the materials, supplies, and equipment and space necessary to teach those much needed skills. On the other hand, 58% uh, stated that they had the professional support necessary to be successful as a computer science teacher. Um, a quote from a computer science teacher from Nevada. Um, she stated that I am the only person in my district that teaches computer science. So building a strong professional learning network would be beneficial. Having this group that you would feel comfortable asking questions and building knowledge with would be vital. And um, this kind of connects as to why those teachers feel that way. As we all know, um, almost all teachers uh, face many challenges regularly, but specifically with computer science teachers, some of the challenges that they face are the lack of academic priority in comparison to those core subjects. Um, they also have lack of support, lack of interest, knowledge, by administrators or counselors. They also believe that scheduling has constraints and limitations. Uh, many educators across the board uh, face excessive preps or possible other responsibilities and have a lack of resources such as the hardware, software, and curriculum resources. And to expand on that, um, 30% of teachers feel underqualified to teach computer science. 20% on top of that feel overwhelmed according to Microsoft and YouGov survey. But on the flip side to that, something that is really notable from a student's perspective, this student, Addison McCoon, is a seventh grade student in Nevada. And Addison said, I never would have taken the computer science class if I didn't have to. But now I really like coding and problem solving. I was the first student ever at my school to finish all the Python, Python lessons. I like the challenge. And that's exactly what students need, is that exposure. Okay, so now I'm going to guide you through the pacing guide and show you where the lessons and activities can be found um, on the Ozobot website. It's an extremely useful platform and basically puts everything that computer science teachers without any background knowledge need right in the palm of their hands. Okay, so this is the Ozobot pacing guide. And if you notice over to your left, you have your dashboard, lessons and devices. The dashboard is an area where you can go and search content specific lessons. Let's say you wanna do something on the water cycle, you just type in water cycle, it'll give you those lessons available that go um, teach interdisciplinary skills, not just computer science, they embed science, uh, ELA and different things. And we'll look at that in just a minute. Um, the pacing guide is a wonderful tool. And I'm gonna open, as you notice, you could, you could start with kindergarten or whatever grade level that you need. They're all here. I'm gonna choose middle school and go to there. Let's just look at the 
the pacing guide. Okay. Here you'll find the lessons and the activities. This is not the pacing guide, but that's okay. We'll just show you where you can find these um, resources. So here you have color codes, that's for K through 12, and that teaches coding and sequencing. Um, we call it unplugged. That means you don't have to have a device, a tablet, a Chromebook. This is just paper and markers, and the, and the, and the Ozobots follow those line sequencing, and that starts the foundation for teaching basic coding skills. Here you have Ozoblockly, which is the app that connects um, the device to the Ozobot Evo. The Evo, as opposed to the Ozobot Bit, has Bluetooth technology. So you can Bluetooth your device and the, the students can control um, or give the commands on, on their screens and have the Ozobot follow those commands. And that's introduction to grade six. This is what Blockly looks like, that block-based coding. And then as they progress, it can be previewed in JavaScript. If you want to create a lesson, you can do that and become a certified Ozobot teacher. And this is just a couple of where you can find some of the basic skills and learning goals. I'm going to go to the next one. Um, I wasn't able to open the pacing guide, so I'll try to come back that, to that in just a second. Um, I wanted to guide you through a quick lesson for sequence. Um, that's the first skill that students learn under um, the Blockly, the block-based coding. And we're gonna, we're gonna show you that video and we'll have to click on the, each individual section. They're very short, but what I wanted to share with you is how easy this is. Um, you have everything you need at your fingertips. She's going to introduce it. She's going to walk us through the lesson. It's, it's very short. If you scroll down, you'll see you've got a full lesson plan. And if you click on that, it will take you here. And there's your grade level. Your time, your outcomes the video links that you can click and, and it'll go straight to the video and she'll actually walk, talk you through the entire lesson, background knowledge, teacher tips, the whole lesson plan is right here at your fingertips. Okay, so to go to the video, and we'll allow the video to run just so you can see how simple this is and how little knowledge you need to employ these skills. Before we start, there's a lesson plan, activity sheets, um, and a lot of times you'll have exemplars here. So we're going to start the video now. Hi everyone, Ms. Tui here. Today you will continue to learn how to program Ozobot with Ozoblockly. You'll focus on sequences in today's lesson. For today's lesson, you will need an Ozobot fully charged and calibrated and the Ozoblockly editor. After today's lesson, you will be able to define the word sequence as it is used in computer science, use a block code editor and create your own sequence of code. The word sequence can be defined in many situations. Most often, it is a group of events that happen in a certain order. For example, when you get dressed in the morning, you put on your pants, socks, and shoes. Do you put on your socks first or your shoes? I would say most people put on their socks first. What would happen if you put on your shoes first? 
In computer science, a sequence is an ordered set of instructions. In other words, it is a series of commands or codes that happen in a certain order. Most of the time, the order of the codes is important. Sequence can also be used as a verb, which means to arrange instructions in a particular order. Let's get started. Be sure to have Ozo Blockly open. You'll begin in level two. Today, you will focus mostly on movement, light effects, timing, and sound blocks. You'll dive deeper into loops in the next lesson. Click on movement in the left panel. Add one of each type of block to your workspace by clicking on the block or dragging the block to the workspace. You should now have seven blocks in your workspace. Connect them together by dragging one below the other. The block you are clicked on or moving will be outlined in white. When you let go of a block, it will click and connect to the other like a puzzle piece. When you are finished connecting the blocks, look at your program and make a prediction about how your bot will behave. Be sure your bot is connected to Ozo Blockly. Then click Run Program and observe the movements of your bot. Can you tell when the bot switches from one block of code to the next? After you have run the sequence and observed your bot, use the drop-down menu in each block to change the direction, distance, speed, and timing of each block. Then run the program again, observing the changes. Next, click on the light effects in the left panel. Add one type of each block from the Light Effects panel to your workspace. You won't be using the Turn Top Light Off block in this step, so delete that block. You can right-click on it and select Delete Block. You can drag the block to the trash can or you can drag the block into the side panel. You will insert one light effect block after each movement block by dragging the light effect block between the two connected movement blocks until you see the white outlines. Drop the block and they should click together. You should have a movement block, a light block, a movement block, a light block, a movement block, and a light block, and etc. Notice that the sequence of our program happens to be a pattern of movement, lights, movement, lights. Keep in mind that a sequence is simply instructions given in a certain order. It does not need to be a pattern. Let's run the program. Insert a light effect block after each movement block. Adjust the top light color by clicking on the colored box within the block. Run your program and observe each light effect. What did you notice about the top light color? 
Did the light effect performed between each movement help you see when one movement stopped and the next movement began? Now you'll work with the sounds category. Click on sounds in the left panel. Add one type of each block from the sounds panel to your workspace. The sequence you are creating contains a pattern of blocks that includes a movement block, a light block, and a sound block. That pattern should repeat seven times. Since there are five sound block options, you will need to duplicate two blocks or duplicate one block two times. Click on the block you want to duplicate. You can tell that it is selected when the block is outlined in white. Then click on the duplicate icon. You can also right click on the block and click duplicate. Add one sound block after each light block. Adjust the sound blocks using the drop down menus within each block. Let's run the program. Run your program and observe the behavior of your bot. Does it perform one movement, one light effect, and one sound seven times in a row? Next, click on the timing category. There's one weight block for the timing category in level two that includes a drop down for how many seconds you would like your bot to wait or hold still. Move the weight block to your workspace. Where in the sequence would you like your bot to stop and wait? Let's run the program. Can you use the drop down to adjust the time, then insert the weight block into your sequence of your program? Run your program and observe how the weight block changes the behavior of your bot.
Now that you are familiar with the blocks in the movement, light, sounds, and timing categories, you will use these blocks to create another sequence to program your bot to travel in a rectangle. Your bot needs to show a different color light on the top LED for each side of the rectangle, and your bot needs to play a sound at each corner. Use the blocks in level two to complete this challenge. Run your bot and make updates to your code as often as needed to check that your sequence of blocks is correct. This is called iterating. Can you run your program and observe the sequence of the behavior of your bot? Iterate your program by making changes to your sequence and testing to get the desired outcome. Well done. Be sure you've completed the following. Did you add blocks from each category to your workspace? Did you put the blocks in a certain order to make a pattern or sequence? Did you add a weight block to your sequence of code? Did you observe how the bot reacted to a change in the sequence of code? Did you create a sequence that traced a rectangle with lights and sounds in appropriate places? Come back again soon for our next lesson. Okay, so the video is very simple and easy to follow. Um, she sufficiently explained um, everything that you need to know about sequence, and it was very simple at the same time. If you'll notice at the bottom, here are your standards again, your description, um, the video, the whole lesson plan, the activity sheets are always right here. You just click on that and print them. And what's really cool is that they add the solution or what mastery looks like. Okay, so we have examined the sequent lesson. Um, I, I'm gonna show you just a couple of other lessons that are cross-curricular. Um, my students and I did the Black History Influential People lesson and they truly love that. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Um, just, it's just a PDF. Okay, so if you, once you go into that lesson, I'm just showing the PDF part. Now, it had the video and everything that you need, just like the last lesson, but it has the questions. Who am I? They have to give the clues, and then they have to create their own color code, and I had the students uh, draw and cut out the, the, facial images or whatever, and then we taped them onto um, the Ozobot and let them go around with their code. And, and they just truly, truly enjoyed it. Um, the next lesson I wanna show you, this one pertains more to science. Um, this is the Ozobot cell model for grades six through nine. And again, it's also cross-curricular getting um, that STEM inclusion in. Um, it gives you the duration. Um, again, here are your resources, the, the cell worksheet, the rubric, the time, the whole entire lesson, the closure. And I have one more, and this one pertains to ELA. And this is called Code Through a Story. And you can, again, you can view the lesson, the full lesson, the activity sheets. Here they have added some pictures of what their mastery looks like. And they built um, different parts or elements of their story. And then they had to code through it. Um, that's for ELA. And again, that goes across um, multiple subject, I mean, grade levels. And don't think that Ozobots are just for elementary or middle school because I have used them with high school and they're just as effective. These students are just as actively engaged and they truly love it. These mini robots spark their interest, they promote engagement and they inspire creativity among users of all ages. And the best part is that it eliminates that fear of success and learning or teaching coding. So that's just a couple lessons and you can save your favorite ones like I've done and um, you can create if you choose to become certified. 
And so now I'm going to show you what it looks like when we <laughs> applause. Okay, so last year I used the Ozobots to create teacher buy-in um, and to try and break down those, disseminate that that fear element of being able to teach something that you may not be um, completely confident in teaching. And when I tell you this was a huge success, look at the time at the top here, I have it circled. Um, we were supposed to stop at 4.30. That's our cutoff for PD. But as you can see, not one person, not one educator was looking at the clock. In fact, they were trying to figure out exactly what they need to do to win this race. So we used um, the Ozobots for professional development and teacher buy-in. And for once, they didn't complain about staying after school. In fact, if you look at their faces, it's self-explanatory. This lesson was called the 100 centimeter dash. It was uh, incorporated a lot of different things, um, uh, especially mathematics with measurement. And they loved it. Our teachers absolutely loved it. And they bought it. And when I started to coach the other teachers um, to be able to teach coding with the Ozobots, it was such an easy transition because they had already had some exposure. I co-taught co -taught with them and showed, showed them exactly what to do. And, and that was it. They took over from there. Um, this is kind of the criteria that we used that day. And as you can see, everyone was engaged and happy. Um, it definitely created that buy-in we were looking for. And if you look on the slide, you'll see that the criteria was they had to design a 100-centimeter racetrack with those OZO codes and finish as fast as possible. They, um, the beginner, they had to use five OZO codes. And the, the criteria was they had to be speed or cool moves. Here, they're not using the app, uh, of course. This is just the color line sequence, and we call this unplugged. But it's great for people who are just starting. So that's where you'd want to start it once you start teaching and then shift over to the Blockly. But um, the advanced people, and there were quite a few teachers that didn't know anything and quickly moved to advance on us. So we had them use 10 of those OZO codes, and four had to be directional and four speed codes, and they love, love, loved it. So here we are at the end, and you're probably thinking, well, we don't have Ozobots. Um, we don't have a lot of resources. Well, that's okay, because I'm gonna leave you with one. The Oak Ridge Institute for Science uh, and Education STEM Ball, ORISE for short, has a STEM Ball, and if you click on this link here, you'll be able to go in and see all the different um, resources that they will actually loan you for free. Um, I've had them ship me a, a set of the Ozobots, um, also 3D printers. And um, let me mention that real quick. Also, don't forget on the website, you can go into that 3D CAD and they're they're, they've already got it set up to where you can just easily, quickly print, 3D print different things, attachments to go to those Ozobots. From bowling pins, you can teach fractions, um, trailers, you can put bulldozer attachments to do a beach cleanup, to teach environmental science, and things like that. Um, I'm going to click on this and just let you see what's in the vault. And they are really great. They ship them out really quick. You just need to do a quick little, um, like a one hour training to have access to the vault. You fill out the information and they have, they have a just an it's unimaginable amount of resources that are absolutely free to the teacher. You don't even have to pay for shipping. So as you can see, you've got, compound microscopes, um, documentation cameras. Oh, there's the Ozobots. It says unavailable, but don't worry, that's about to change. And 
3D printers, filaments, classroom, uh, computers, and it's just really a great, great resource. So that concludes um, the presentation that I have for you today. If you have any questions, um, my email address is on the PowerPoint, jerryrecker at yahoo.com. Please don't hesitate. If I don't have an answer, I'll work hard to find it for you. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. And more importantly, I hope that you can impact students, especially those that are underserved. Thank you for tuning in and have a great rest of your day.